Hey, it's Miss Cole. So, um, today's the first day of school, and I decided I was going to make an end of the day video about how things went. And then my computer decided that it wasn't going to record with QuickTime, so I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? So, I got my phone, and I got my electric hole puncher, which has a little stand to hold the paper that you are punching holes in, and I put my phone on that. <laughs> Yay! Hopefully it'll work! I guess we'll find out, because um, this is take one so far. Today is August 4th as I'm recording this. Hopefully I can get this done in one take. We'll see. So today was our first date with students. In the county where I'm at, I checked. The CDC says we're at a community level has moved from low to medium. So I did see some students who are masking. I have a mask available, but one of the things that, you know, we've learned is that masking isn't really about what's best for you. It helps a little bit, but not much. What you need to do for yourself is make sure you're vaccinated and boosted. So I am, and I am not living with or in regular contact with anybody who has other um, medical concerns that would make them high risk. So for me, and my family, I don't feel like I need to mask. It's not something that would significantly increase our safety. However, I keep a mask available so that if I have students or other people around me that I, you know, that, that they want me to mask, I will absolutely do that. I'm hoping that things continue to improve. We'll see how that goes. Um, I've also heard that here in Georgia, there is going to be additional supply money available to us. The governor has decided to take some of the federal relief money from COVID and put that towards teacher supply items. We'll see. The downside to it is you can't just buy whatever you want, but within the framework of the things that we were allowed to purchase, I was able to find stuff that was useful last semester, so hopefully I will be able to do so this semester. I haven't found out yet. One of the challenges that we're facing is there is an increased sort of tightness on our department. Our test scores were apparently low compared to the test scores for math, science, and social studies. However, I went and looked up our test scores. This is from spring semester. All right, so the Georgia test scores, the Walker County test scores, that's our system, and our school's individual test scores for the language arts required exam. And they're all really similar. We're within, we're within five percentage points in every case. And in most cases, it's a lot closer than that. So to say that our test scores are low seems inaccurate. Um, what I didn't do, I didn't compare this to our test scores in other subject areas, but what this indicates to me is if scores in other subject areas are higher, I would also want to compare their scores to the system level and the state level, because it may just be that the English test was just a harder test this year or this past year. This goes back to something I say a lot, which is that all assessment is subjective. When we decide where's the cutoff going to be between beginning and developing or developing and proficient. That's a subjective decision. How, you know, what level counts as, you know, low test scores. We want our students to feel competent and to be able to tackle new challenging material. If, um, if they're not good readers, that means there's less stuff that they can read. I mean, that's really the problem with, you know, low reading ability. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that you're stupid. It just, you know, this particular skill is something that you haven't developed. So, you know, you have fewer opportunities. We want our students to have opportunities. So there is a reason for it. But as a result of this learning loss and the, the consequent lower test scores, which may or may not be a result of COVID, it may just, you know, be these students aren't, you know, it might be a reflection on the methods we're using to teach. Whatever reason, we are incorporating benchmarks, which we haven't done for quite a few years. And the last time we did it, it was not as effective as it could have been. And those of you who are on my Patreon, maybe I'll make another video about this that just goes on Patreon. One of the things I'm hopeful about is the fact that the benchmark we're using isn't huge. The last time we did a benchmark, it was really patterned after the end of course exam, and it took an hour and a half to give the test. The benchmark we're using now is one that'll take 15 
minutes, maybe half an hour, depending on, you know, there, it, it is reading focused and, uh, comprehension and analysis focused. So it's not all the standards, but we're really focusing in so that we can give this benchmark multiple times. We're going to give it, um, pretty much the beginning of the semester, quarter of the way through two quarters, three quarters, and then end of the semester is when we'll give final exams or the state test. So we'll be able to give it multiple times and hopefully to see progress. It's not the same test, but each time it's going to be focused on reading, comprehension, analysis, uh, character development, those kinds of things, those standards, the reading literature standards. So I'm glad that we can give it multiple times so that we can hopefully see growth and pinpoint and really look at patterns. That's really what we're looking for when we're looking at benchmarks. So fingers crossed, might be a good thing. We are also being required to develop a pacing guide. And we haven't had that for 10th grade, which is what I've mostly taught recently. Recently. We haven't had that, I think, since I've been here. There's definitely a lot of pushback because up until this point, we've had not exactly carte blanche, teach what you want, but it's basically been teach what the uh, district is willing to approve. And it, if you teach something else and a parent gets ticked off, then that's on you. So we're having to work together and say, okay, we're going to teach different things, but we're going to, are we supposed to approach it the same way? How are we doing this? And there's not, there's been some inconsistent communication there. That's been really frustrating. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a sticking point right now. Another thing that's been developing is that I'm not actually teaching any courses this semester. So I am conflicted about that. Um, I am facilitating courses. I am the teacher of record. I put the records in, but I am helping out with the online courses. And this, you know, makes some degree of sense because when I got my master's in English education, my focus area was in online learning. And it was super helpful because this was like about, this was the summer before the March when schools closed because of COVID. And that was when I finished my master's. And so when we started, you know, we started hearing that, you know, there might be a possibility of schools closing and going, attempting to go online. I was like, okay, I got this. <laughs> and, um, it was, it was, it was definitely challenging because we didn't have the infrastructure. We, you know, students didn't often have devices. Some of them didn't have internet. I had one student that I did not hear from at all for the rest of the semester. Didn't see that student next year. This past year, I happened to run, I passed the student in the hall. I'm like, oh, you're here, you're okay. And it was just like, it was this huge, I hadn't realized I'd been carrying that weight. So yeah, when we first, when we first went into that, it was really difficult, but I felt really prepared personally. And I've been able to incorporate some of what I learned in my master's in my face-to-face -face teaching. Um, you know, putting more material online so it's accessible for students. Things I started was this YouTube channel. So being the facilitator for these classes makes a lot of sense. I'm also facilitating the dual enrollment classes. So we have a college professor coming in and teaching it two days a week, but then the other days I'm here and available to support the students in their, their work. I will be interested to see how that goes. I don't know how I'll feel about it um, because being the teacher of the class has kind of been an, an important part of my professional identity for like a long time now. But I am intrigued to see how I'm going to feel about this and, and what it's going to be like to be in a different role. Next semester, I have some of the same classes. I will be facilitating dual enrollment classes again for some and uh, doing the, the online uh, academy classes, which are just high school classes that will be online for some, but I will also have an English to 10th grade class like I usually do. So I'm, I'll definitely be looking forward to that and thinking about how I'm going to approach that having been through this semester. So I'm, I'm not real sure how it's going to go, but it'll be interesting to find out. So I'm thinking about it that way. And finally, I just want to talk about today and how it went. Uh, I came to school really early and I was out where parents were dropping students off out of their car, just open the door and I got have candy, not just for me. Actually, I didn't even have any of that candy. 
Um, no, wait, I did have some lemon heads. They were quite tasty. And uh, so, yeah, I was out there with Candy, and some of the, the student government officers were there. We had music playing, and we were like, hi, welcome back, happy first day of school. And I was like, free candy. And surprisingly, some of them didn't want it. But, you know, I got them because the counterpoint to that is, well, it's okay if you don't want some. Take some to give to your friends. And <laughs> some of them were just like, no, it's too early for this. <laughs> because it was like, you know, just after 7 in the morning. But it was nice. I recognized some of them from open house the night before. And some of them were students that I'd had previous years. And it was just it was nice to see everybody again. So that was early and under-caffeinated, but still a great way to start the morning. I do have all freshmen in my, I've got my homeroom and it's a freshman class and I will loop with them every year. So they'll be my homeroom for the next four years until they graduate. Oh. Interesting, I was thinking, and most of them are, that they would be small, but I've got two of them who are twins and they're taller than I am and they're freshmen. So that was, that was interesting. <laughs> I'm used to being, I'm used to being the tall one, you guys. Let's see. Mostly I just passed out papers with them, but I did want to go over some things that I did that were different. A lot of teachers have shoe caddies that they use to hold student cell phones during class. I do not have one of these. I mean, I, I personally own a shoe caddy, but it's at home and it holds my shoes. So not that one. But instead, what I did was I gave them um, envelopes. These are six by nine envelopes, and I had them decorate them and put their name on it with uh, big markers. And here's, here's another student's one. So, you know, so that they, they are all easy to recognize. And then once they've done that, I said, okie dokie, now take your phones out, power them down and put them in that sucker. And then I, you know, bring them to me. And so they were away. First day, no cell phones. And then as we were finishing up with homeroom and I'd given them all the papers, this is what gets signed, this is what needs to be brought back, etc. I said, all right, so I want you to take about 15 seconds and think about today and what you're hoping for. One thing that you're hoping for today. Just take a few seconds. You can tell somebody at your table. I have my desk set up in tables kind of facing each other. You can tell somebody at your table. You don't have to. But when I call your name to get your envelope, what I want you to do is come get your envelope and tell me what you're hoping for. And just tell me. Just quiet. And they did. Some of them came up and I couldn't think of anything. So that's okay. I hope you have a really good day. And I gave them the envelope and I said, you know, well, go back, take your phone out and bring the empty envelope back to me. And so then I put them in this crate. You can see that there's still a bunch of them in there because I have more than two students in homeroom. Speaking of which, I'm going to put this back in there. And I have something else to show you. And um, so tomorrow, the first thing that they'll do is they'll come and they'll get their envelope and they will put their phone in it, but they'll hang on to it until I come around to gather them up. So I'll gather all of them at the same time and we won't have some people getting their envelopes while their phone's in there and you know don't have to worry about somebody touching your phone. I like the envelopes because it means that no one else, like I'm not touching their phone. I just, you know, I, I don't even really touch it. I, I do take it, I do take the envelope out and call their name. So yeah, it's, it's a nice way to kind of secure the phone, but also have it away. So one thing I'm going to have them do tomorrow then is to create what I call name tents. So it's an eight and a half sheet by 11 sheet of paper and it's folded in such a way that it makes a little tent. Now I had a couple of students do it in my fourth period class and they didn't do it the way I told them to, which was to put their name on this side and that side. But I should, I figured it should do the pictures that they did. And that way I don't have to show student names. So I made a little designs. And so they put this up and then I can see their names and I can get to know them that way. But the other thing is that on the inside, this is the five day feedback form. And they write about how the first day went. So my homeroom students are actually gonna get this tomorrow because if I given them to them today, they wouldn't have had anything, or at least hopefully not that much, that would have happened that they would have feedback on. So they'll get it tomorrow, and one of the things they'll do during homeroom tomorrow is write about how their first day went. And then when they get their envelope back, they will take out the phone and fold up the form and slide it into the envelope. They won't even have to close it. I mean, you can close it if you want, not a big deal. And then they'll turn that back into me. But what they don't know is, they might figure it out, they're pretty smart, So that I will take these out and I will write a little note to them 
so that then on Monday when they get back, they're not going to write about their second day of school. They can if they want to, but the key is I want them to write back to me. So we'll have a little conversation that goes on privately, but with documentation so that my butt's covered over the first five days of school. I've done this part of it before, but this is the first time that I've used the envelopes with the phones. So we'll see how that goes. That is another thing that I will be interested to find out how effective it is. So learning opportunities all around. All right, I think this is the last thing. One thing that I did last night at Open House was I had these little half sheets of paper and there's a little box and it says, hey you, you're awesome because. And I asked grown-ups to take one of those chubby Crayola markers and to write a note of encouragement to freshmen. No names, but if you happen to be thinking about one particular freshman in particular, I'm sure it won't, nobody will mind. So here's some, I've got, I got them laminated today. And uh, here's some. You're, hey you, you're awesome because you got this. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. You're awesome because you are so smart. Stay humble. You're awesome because you're new to this school, so that means new friends, new classes, and an all new school. I hope you have a wonderful year. You got this. Do great things. Go Ramblers. That's a 2020. Hey you, you're awesome because you are unique. You are special. You're number one. Hey you, you're awesome because you can do anything you set your mind to. Hey you, you're awesome because you light up any room that you enter. Stay positive all day. So, and I have a bunch more of them that I have not finished cutting out yet. I'm going to work on that and then they're going to go on. Actually, I can cut it. Neat. This bulletin board over here. You kind of see it says Ramblers and it's very empty, but I'm going to put the, my, my happy little messages. I'm going to put them over there. So that's where they'll go. And then as my students come in, hopefully they will just get, they will know that there are people in their lives who are rooting for them. And I think everybody needs that, you know? So hopefully that will help make it a fantastic year. And if you are a teacher or a parent or a student, I hope that you have a really, really good school year. Bye for now, everybody.